and welcome. In this video we're going to take a brief look at polymorphism in relation to objects. In polymorphism 1 we looked at polymorphism in relation to methods and how methods can have many forms and similarly here we're going to look at objects and how objects can also have many forms in relation to polymorphism. So as we've said previous polymorphism means many forms. So statements such as employee E equals new manager are allowed so long as manager is inherited from employee. So in this example, employees are superclass, managers are subclass, and we can create an instance of employee called E using the manager constructor. However, once we do this, the following statement won't work, e.setDepartmentName. The reason for this is that the setDepartmentName method is located in the manager class. And as E has been created as an employee, it's not going to get access to that method. So it rec the compiler recognizes the E variable only as an employee object. The employee class does not have that method. The only way to deal with that is to cast it. So while this might seem like a restriction, it's often useful to be able to declare an array of several objects in an inheritance model that all look and feel like the same object, where they might actually have slight differences and we can then construct or cast them later according to the type of class we want okay but we'll look at this in more detail when we get to arrays of objects for now it's just something you need to be aware that is possible and that we can do so let's look back at our assessment example in previous videos we've looked at this assessment example where assessment is our superclass and we have subclasses test moodle test and project so the common data members in assessment are name, type and weighting and in test for instance we then have further data members of num questions and duration. Supposing then in the assessment app class I make an instance of assessment and I construct it with the test constructor. Here we give it a name OOP exam, we give it a type terminal, uh, we give it a weighting which is 30 um, let's we also then if we stop there we'll get an error because we're using the test constructor and the test constructor requires number of questions and duration as well okay so while we are declaring an instance of assessment we are using the test constructor so we need to give it all of the information that it requires so the number of questions is 10 and the duration is 60 minutes we can then just do a simple print statement print ln and in here we can do a dot get details okay the get details method is a polymorphic method that we declared in an earlier example there's one method in the assessment class that pulls together the data members of the assessment class and then in the test class we overwrite that we use super to get the details in the um, super class and then we add on the details that we want from our subclass. Okay, so we're using the get details method here to print the contents of assessment A. And if we build that, then you'll see all of the answers, all of the contents come out. So we get the duration and the number of questions which are specific to test, even though we've created it as an instance of assessment. Okay, so the, um, Java knows which get details method to use. When we're going to declare classes and objects with many different types, we need to be able to often check in and see just exactly what is this particular object an instance of. So we use the instance of keyword to test how a particular object was constructed. And the class type then is determined at runtime. Okay, and we'll look at an example of this in just a minute. Um, the other thing that we've mentioned is that once we've declared them with all these different types, we can cast them to be the, their original type, okay? So we declared at the start an instance of E constructed with manager, okay? I can check if E is an instance of manager here in my if statement, and if needs be, I can cast E so that, ma so that it becomes a fully fledged manager, okay? It becomes a fully fledged instance of manager manager as if we had created it with the manager or created it as a manager to begin with and how we do that is manager m so 
So we make a new manager called M and into that we put E but we cast E as a manager in much the same way that we might have cast integers and doubles in the past. Okay, The type we want it to be goes into the brackets and once we've done that I can call set department name on M. Okay, So I can use the set department name method now because my E has become an instance of manager. All right, This is very useful and again it will all make a lot more sense and you'll see the use of it when we start to look at arrays of objects and array lists. But please note and be aware we cannot cast a subclass to a superclass type. Okay, So here I have turned E, the superclass, into a manager which is the subclass. I cannot turn a manager into an employee. Okay, I can't cast the other direction. All right, so that's just something to be aware of. So if we take another look then, let's try an example like that in our assessment example. So supposing we wanted to create a change duration method here in our assessment class. Public void change duration. So that if we get an assessment that is a of type test, we can change the duration to whatever duration is passed to the method. Okay, so the idea being that when we call this method, we'll read in an assessment and a duration and we'll make some changes. Okay, so in here we're going to check first off if A is an instance of test and if it is then we want to create a new test t into which we're going to put a but in order for it to go in it needs to be cast as a test okay and then we can say t dot set duration to duration whatever duration has come into the method so when we call this method and we'll try it out now we must pass it an instance of assessment and a duration and then if that instance of assessment is a test we can cast it to be test and we can set the duration. So let's take a look in the app class. A dot change duration A comma 120 minutes. Okay. And then again, if we print system dot out dot print ln a dot get details, and we run this, you'll see the first time it runs, we get OP exam terminal waiting thirty duration sixty number of questions ten. Then when we print it the second time following the change, we get an OP exam terminal waiting 30 duration 120 and questions 10 okay so here you can see our duration has been altered because a was in fact an instance of test okay had we declared a as an instance of project or something similar you will have found then that when we passed a in here it wouldn't change any sort of duration okay so again polymorphic objects can have many forms in much the same way as methods can have many forms and we will find a great use for these when we come to arrays of objects and array lists but for now just be aware we can when we create an object or construct an object we can construct it with its subclass type okay and then we can cast it later on to change it thank you